So, Shabbat Shalom. I am Brother Paolo Roy here in Italy, part of SY7 Ministry, and today's Shabbat message. So, running headlong into chaos, are you ready? So before I jump into the message, I'm going to blow the shofar and pray, and then we'll get right into it. Avinu in heaven, may your name be sanctified. May your kingdom be blessed. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our bread continually. Forgive us the debt of our sin as we forgive the debt of those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Abba, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. And most importantly, we thank you for your set-apart day, Shabbat, the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week that you have ordained and prescribed and set into place to be the day of rest, the day that we shut everything off from our lives and put it aside and give our undivided attention and our time to you, to be with you, to dwell with you, to be with our King. And we just ask, Abba, that at this, that today and during your Shabbat, the Father, that you will dwell with us, that your Holy Spirit fill our homes, fill our hearts, our minds, that your Word fill us, Father, that that we think upon you and and fellowship together. And that we just talk to you and worship to you, Father, and lift up our praises to our one Father, the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, and through your one and only begotten Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah and our Savior, we give you the glory and the praise, and we thank you for all of this that you have given to us. We thank you for your Sabbath, and may we remember it, guard it with all of our heart. We ask this in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen and amen. All right, Mishpaha. So, you know, it's to just kind of get into this message again, running headlong into chaos. Are you ready? I have a couple key bullet points of what I want to touch on in this message. And anybody who knows me, I'm not a thus say it the Lord. There's a lot of people who will quickly say the Lord has told me and the and God told me this and gave me a vision of that or or whatever. And I think sometimes people are a little too loose with that. And and there are times I believe that Abba does give us something to speak. And again, I, I, I don't declare, thus saith the Lord, but I think that it's safe to say that this is one that qualifies for that category based on His Word and based on the very warnings of His Word. And in that aspect, I, I, I do feel that we can say that on this message. The first bullet point of what I want to speak on is that the more I see this world running headlong into chaos, the greater the realization of how short our time is and how much we need to make sure we're ready for our Messiah's return and or our death that literally can happen at any moment. And I want to touch on a few key scriptures, but before I do, I want to talk about just briefly of just what exactly am I speaking of running headlong into chaos. Multiple places in scripture, Matthew 24, uh, uh, let me try that again, Matthew 24, um, 
Luke 21, uh, I think Mark 13, um, and, and, and among other places, talks about very specific situations of how the world's going to look as we are entering into the final days that will usher in the return of our Messiah. And one, many of those things is famine, pestilence, earthquakes, natural disasters all over the world. We've been seeing that in the last 20 years, according to science and different things like that, greater than ever recorded in history, supposedly. But not just that. In the last hundred years, we, according to everybody's claims, that there are more wars between different countries around the world in the last hundred years than all the world than all the wars put together throughout history, supposedly. But the one thing we can stand on that we do see right now, that is greater than anything ever before, except parts where we see things happening, like with Greece or Sodom and Gomorrah and things like that. But we're seeing everything happening at the same time. Is famine, disease, pestilence, natural disasters. But now we're seeing wars that are just, everybody's breaking out in wars with each other. We have World War III right at the at the front door, so to speak, just waiting to bust out. Everybody's on the edge of their seat with this next election in America. So many think that it is going to be the, the crossroads of what is going to happen in the world after that. That, it, that that election is a key component to where the world's going to turn. Will it go good or will it go even worse and will it get really bad will it get really evil will the gates of hell be opened up and unleashed on the earth even worse and even greater or will abba give us one last reprieve before the proverbial other shoe drops and his wrath begins to unfold on this earth but not only just that we see homosexuality, perversion. Uh, we see, I, I remember, and, and anybody who is anywhere near my age and older, we all remember a time when it would be taboo to hear a bad word, even, even to say hell or, or, uh, or, or the word damn in a cuss word form to be used on a TV show. And, and that the only way you ever heard any bad cuss words would be in an R-rated movie. And then even then, you had to be a certain age to be able to even get into such a movie. But now today, not only do TV shows and movies just allow anything out of their mouth, it's not considered bad language anymore because it's fallen under free speech. You hear politicians and political figures who, at, at one point in the past, they, they were to have a clean mouth to, for the purpose of looking grown up and, and mature. Now they all sound like a bunch of seventh graders cussing and talking up a bunch of nonsense. They don't curb their tongues any further. And those very things are spoken of in Scripture as well, of, of how... People and, and those who, who can't control their mouth and, and, and the tongue is a fire and, and, and the love of many will grow cold and, and, and uh, the love of money will become great and, and, and people will just, it'll be all about me, me, me. And all of this stuff and gender is all this gender confusion and, and the children, that, the way they pay the price worse than anything. They're the ones that are suffering all of this stuff more than anybody else. The sexual immorality against children is heightened so great. It's like you almost wonder any moment now when, when um, sexual perversion against children will become legal. 
where people will somehow, some way, finally find a way to bring it into law that it's okay that at 12 years or older you can have sex with your family member or, or any girl or boy. I mean, it's getting sickening. And not to mention the sex trafficking and everything that is just so horrendous already. But yet in one corner of their mouth, sex trafficking is so bad and everything. But out of the other corner of their mouth, everything that is out there from movies to games to everything is all about sexualizing our children. And scripture talks about that where they will sell their sons for perversion and, and their daughters for, for wine or the other way around, whichever. I just read it the other day and I'm probably misquoting it. Forgive me. But you know what I'm talking about. All of these things. And we see throughout history and in ancient times how a lot of these things were common at different times. Sodom and Gomorrah was so vile. That men, a group of men, would even have the audacity to try to break into um, um, Lot's house because they wanted to carnally know those angels who, who were in there. And today, it's so wicked and evil, we're seeing that same spirit of mentality but that's not even it. Now we've got AI and all, and all this computer generated stuff with the kind of videos and stuff, the, the pornography that has saturated the whole planet. There is nothing that you sexually can desire that you can't find to watch on video. And then, and not to mention that, but the perverted, the, the, these, robots and, and things that are being created for these sexual fetish, fetishes and, 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 and uh, vile ways that man comes up with and AI and the stuff that they're trying to make out of that. They're already creating and trying to create things to, to, to fulfill sexual fantasies. I mean, we are seeing every literal sin being amplified greater than we've ever seen before, than we could have ever imagined. And we're not even in the worst of it yet. Ms. Baha, we're running headlong into chaos. And what is chaos? It's absolute destruction. And this is all being done because of man's unwillingness to submit and surrender to Abba, our Father in heaven, and to his only begotten son, Yeshua, who died on the cross for every one of these people to have a chance to receive salvation. But even in some ways, so much worse than that, the body of Messiah is failing and this is part of the reason why the wickedness is rising as it is as bad as it is because the body of messiah is failing the shepherds of the sheep are failing and not doing their job you have so much division among the body from those in the messianic and hebrew roots communities with sacred namers and and everybody coming up with all of these different pronunciations and everybody arguing over calendars and and everything and then you just have the other side of the same coin christianity and the church who are just throwing out all of god's commandments and feasts and adopting everything that is not of him or is pagan and just declaring that God is going to accept it and serve them however way they choose. And it went all the way across the board. It's everybody just serving God however way they choose. And so in so doing that, we're either being, we're being a major stumbling block for those young in their walk or weak in their walk. And for those who are trying to seek the truth, there's, it's causing so much confusion that more and more are turning away from the word of God altogether. Hence, fulfilling and is being fulfilled and continuing to be fulfilled, 2 Second, um, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, 
and there shall be a great apostasy in the last days, right before the son of perdition is revealed. And Mishpaha, where are we? Where are you? Are you ready? And then here's the other thing. In all of this, the reverence and the fear of our Father has been lost. Nobody trembles at His word anymore. It seems to be. And those that do are overshadowed by those that don't. Those who are really seeking to walk holy and righteous before Abba, those of, those con of the congregations and the ministries who are really seeking to, to lead people in the truth and to be broken and surrendered before our Father and, uh, and our King Messiah are being overshadowed by all of the big conglomerate congregations and churches who are just teaching willy-nilly and loosely and, and do doctrines of demons and itching of ears. And it's causing more and more people to be lost and confused and not know the truth. And where are you now? And are you ready for what's coming? But then not even that, you think about that you might even live to be there you may not even live to see the end of this day. And we are seeing people dropping around us, dying left and right like we've never heard of before. We are seeing people by the thousands either dropping dead from all of the different diseases and things in the world and the, and the things most recent in the last few years to, to attacks and wars and, 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 and everything else, and people are dying and dying and dying and dying. And we have everything that's going on to feed into that. And we keep thinking it's the most foolish thought in the world. We think it's not going to touch us. We think that it's not going to happen to us or in our home. And then it does. And Scripture says we're not promised tomorrow. Scripture says that we can't even add one inch to our stature or anything. And yet we think that we can make plans and, oh, I'm going to do this next week. I'm going to do this next month. I'm going to do this next year. And this is why the Word says that we are to say, by the, if it be His will, if it be the Lord's will, and it's something that should be a part of our daily vocabulary. If it be Abba's will, we will do this, even tomorrow. Tomorrow, we, me and James and Michelle have plans to do a few things. If it be His will that He allows us to wake up tomorrow morning, then, then hopefully we'll get to do those things. And so with all that said, I want to touch on some of these key verses pertaining to this. First, I want to go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Yeshua speaks and says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. But yet when I see all the believers online and in churches and congregations, you know, and I see their live sermons and everything and I and I hear the way they talk in their in their little little live videos and things everybody acts like they've got it made everybody acts like they're in and we don't even know if our name is written in the book of life because according to Matthew 24 it says that those who endure to the end will be saved we are in the stages of salvation, but our salvation is not complete. Why are we acting like it is? 
And why are we acting like this is an easy process to get into heaven? Yet Yeshua even said that you, you, you will declare, haven't, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I heal in your name? Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I do all these things in your name? And he's going to say, I know you not. And how do you know you won't be a part of that group he's talking to? Are you on your knees before him in absolute fear and trembling? This is why he says in Isaiah 66 too, on this one shall I look upon he who trembles at my word. And when we are walking around in absolute arrogance and haughtiness and pridefulness, thinking that we have got it all figured out and that everybody needs to listen to you on what to preach and how to teach, if that is the mentality that we go around with, then we are already lost. We have already missed the boat. Let us not be that one who stood in there in prayer saying, Oh God, thank you that I am not like this man. And so many among the body of Messiah are acting so arrogantly. People acting like if you don't believe the way they believe, then you're going to hell. If you don't believe the earth is flat, you're going to hell or round, you're going to hell or this or that or the, the, the uh, different Sabbath teachings. Or if you don't pronounce his name this way, you're going to hell. If you say the name Jesus, you're going to hell. This is pride and haughtiness and none of it is biblical. Not a single scripture verse backs up this kind of mindset and this doctrines of demons. And yet, and, and on top of it all, you don't even realize for every soul that you cause to stumble, you're adding that onto the things that you are going to have to answer to Yeshua for that you're going to give an account for. This is why Paul said, don't be quick to be a teacher. Everybody wants to be a teacher. Everybody thinks they're a Hebrew scholar. Everybody thinks they know everything because they've watched a few YouTube videos. Everybody thinks they got special revelation, yet everybody's in disagreement with each other. And 99.9% .9 of all of everybody, they're all wrong. Because only one thing is right, and that is what lit, lines up with the Holy Scriptures. And if we're not teaching and preaching on what it says without adding or taking away, then we are at risk of being a false shepherd, a false teacher, and we will be held twice accountable. You want to take on that mantle? Then you take on double the accountability. I also want to look at John chapter 14. John 14 verses 12 through 15. Yeshua again speaking, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, I, I, have, I have been walking in absolute commitment to Yah for 20 plus years. And in all the years, I have seen from every aspect of Messianic Hebrew roots and Christianity Everybody name it and claim it. Everybody doing these kind of laying on the hands and, and claiming they're speaking in tongues and doing all these things and nothing ever happens. 
There have been literally only one or two times that I have seen something really happen, a healing, a deliverance, or anything like that in all of the years. And how can that be if we all have it right? But Yeshua shows clearly, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, this is the key thing. If you really believe in him, then you would be walking in all of his ways. You would be keeping his commandments. You're not trying to make him into the Messiah that fits your life. You're not trying to make him a Messiah that will be pleased in what you choose to do, how you choose to live, and, and what kind of holidays or anything else you choose to keep, all while disregarding anything else. He sets the bar. He sets the standard, and we make the changes. He does not change his word to follow us. It is we that change our life to follow his word. But everybody thinks they can just name it and claim it with these the gifts of the Spirit. And I fully believe that the gifts of the Spirit are still applicable today. But I don't believe that the majority of those who claim to have it actually do because every time I see them do something, it never happens. People declare that they, ha they have the gift of healing and they walk up and they declare somebody healed and nothing happens and then they make an excuse for it. And that is not how it works. When the disciples healed, people were healed. When, when Yeshua did stuff, they, it was done. And when we truly believe in him, that means that we live in accordance to his ways, surrendered, obeying, following after him with all of our heart, getting rid of sin out of our life, letting go of the things that are keeping you weak so you're not constantly having to go back and repent, getting rid of the stuff in your flesh, getting rid of your offenses, getting over yourself, getting past the things that keep you out of pride so that you can walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. But we are heading and running headlong into chaos, just as bad as the, those of the world. And what makes us worse is because we claim to follow the one and only true Messiah and we're dragging him through the mud. We're dragging his name through the mud. We're dragging Messiah's word, our father's word, his holy scriptures, his Torah through the mud. We're dragging his Sabbath through the mud. Let's go to 1 Peter. This one here, I, I've talked with Brother James and my wife and Anthony, all of our ministry team so many times because this one just never ceases to really punch me in the heart. It should always punch us in the heart with absolute fear. 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19, For the time has come, for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Think about this Meditate on these couple verses and really think about what is being said here. First judgment is coming and it begins with the house of God first and that's who we are. We are the temple of Adonai, of Yeshua right now. He says that our body is a temple. 
And anything we do to it, we sin against him. So if we are not walking in obedience to his word, we are sinning against that temple. If we are not walking in obedience to his ways and being broken before him and getting rid of pride and and unforgiveness and dissension and division and all of these things, if we are allowing these things to continue in our life, we are sinning against him because we are bringing wrong into his temple. Yeshua does not share space with Satan. Either Yeshua lives in your heart or he doesn't. And Mishpaha, how many times are you pushing him out the door because you refuse to let go of stuff in your life? Because you won't forgive that person who did you wrong or you you don't want to let go of these certain things you like to do, even though it is hindering your walk and you like, you, you use the excuse of, oh, well, I'm a sinner anyways. I can never be free of this because we will always sin. And you use it as a crutch to justify these things, thinking that well, I just keep repenting, I'll be okay. But yes, scripture says, that if we truly receive him and he comes into our life, and I'm paraphrasing, that we sin no more. And that means to live in sin, not that we will never commit something wrong. We are of the flesh, and we will always be battling the flesh. The Apostle Paul taught that. I do the things I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I want to do. And and that's why Yeshua, Paul, and all of Scripture talks about how we got to bring our thoughts into submission every day. We got to bring our flesh into submission every day. That's why we need the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, literally the helmet of Yeshua. His name means salvation. We have to have the helmet of Yeshua. That means Yeshua needs to be in our thoughts always so Satan can't be. We need the armor of God so that, and and which has to apply to training. You can't be a soldier and go out and be victorious in battle if you don't train for that battle. You're not just going to put a a suit of armor on and go win and become some um, man of renown uh, uh, victories and and who, who beats everybody and not ever do anything to train a single day with the sword or or with the shield or or any of these things. It's ludicrous thinking, but that is the mindset. Everybody thinks that they can just declare, I know, and therefore they'll be victorious in, in whatever it is, but they know nothing. The breastplate of righteousness is so our heart is right before him. Our loins gird about in truth is so that we are centered in him. Our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace means that we are walking in his ways. If we are walking in his ways, then we are not walking in the ways of sin. The shield of faith, faith, a verb, an action. You can't claim to have faith if you are not acting and doing in that faith. And the only way that that shield of faith is, the, is going to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy is if you know how to wield the sword, which is the word of God, which means to be in it every day, studying the word of Yah, taking in the word of Yah, sp- being constant in prayer and supplication unto him so that you can yield that shield with absolute confidence and withstand all the fiery darts of the enemy, and so that you can wield that sword that will be sharpened by the word of Abba to defeat the enemy. But if you don't have a prayer life, if you don't study the word, your sword is so dull you couldn't cut butter with it, your shield is weak, it will be shattered, and the rest of your armor will crumble to the ground. This part again 
If the righteous one is scarcely saved, scarcely, Mishpaha, it means by the hair of your chinny chin chin. I mean, seriously, you're going to barely make it by the proverbial saying of skin of your teeth. All of these lame sayings. This is, we're going to barely get in there. This is what it's telling us. And so in the most literal sense is that it will be by the grace and mercy of Yeshua that he chooses to allow you in. And if for us to be so arrogant and haughty to think that we got this, most likely means you don't. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Twelve three. Therefore, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of Elohim calls Yeshua accursed, and no one can say that Yeshua is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean you have to verbally curse Messiah. If your life and everything about it, or even part of it, is contrary to the Word of God, you are speaking and cursing Yeshua. If That's why it says that no one speaking by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, calls Yeshua a curse, or speaks anything against the Word of Yah. Because it is Yeshua that all of the Holy Scriptures is written about from Genesis to Revelation. This is why Yeshua said, if you believed in Moses, you would believe me for Moses spoke of me. The second bullet point, I also see the desperate need to reach the loss like never before. For their time is also running out, and they need to hear and know about the hope they can have through Yeshua. But how are they to find out if we aren't making every effort to reach them? Mishpaha again, how can we reach the lost when we're too busy fighting among each other over stupid stuff? How can we reach the lost when we're too busy fighting over uh, controversial things and genealogies, the very things that Scripture says not to be divisive over? To being divisive over name pronunciation, being divisive over um, you know, uh, um, dates or, or calendars or things that Scripture does not talk about at all the shape of the earth, and all of this ludicrous nonsense. There's nothing beneficial about the, the divisiveness, the fighting, the bickering, the arguing of it. You want to study it? Cool. You want to learn what shape it is? Cool. But when you are, are willing to tell somebody that they are lost because they think it's a shape different than yours, or, or any of these other things that everybody divides over, when people are arguing about whether those in the land are real or not, and the Jews are real or not, and this and that and the other and all this stuff, you will never reach the loss because you're too focused on your own fight. Satan's punking you. All of you who are getting caught up and involved on this, you are being punked by the devil. And he's laughing at you and mocking you because he's made you a fool for him. He's got you right where he wants you, not teaching the gospel to the lost, not going out into the world and preaching the gospel into all creation, not going and sharing with our neighbors the truth of Messiah, so that they too can have the hope of salvation. 
anything to keep you off of that focus, and he's got you where he wants you. Ms. Baha, how many people does y'all put in our paths on a constant basis because we claim to be a Messiah. We claim to know the truth. We claim to be serving Him. If you think that God does not ever put anybody in your path, you're gravely mistaken. Because if you call on the name of Messiah, whether you say Yeshua or Jesus, and you declare that you are a servant of the Most High, and that you are a part of the, the body of Messiah and of the saints, then it is your duty, it is your job, and however way y'all lead you to do it, to help share the gospel. And if, if you desire it and hunger it, and you pray for Abba to open up the door, he will make a way. It doesn't matter what your situation is, it doesn't matter where you're at, it doesn't matter if you have a disability, no matter what it is, if you earnestly seek Abba and tell him that you want to be used by him to share his word and to share his truth to others so that they can have the same hope, he will make a way. What we see impossible is made possible by Messiah. And so the few scriptures I have on that is going back to Matthew chapter 16. Verses 24 through 27. Then Yeshua said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a, a man give in exchange for? For his soul. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Mishpaha, do not be the one, and I think I touch on this here, but I want to just in case. We all know of the well, hopefully we all know. If you don't go and 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 read it, the parable of the talents, and where one was given 10, one was given five, and one was given one. And the 10, the one with the 10 went out and doubled it. The one with the five went out and doubled. The one with the one went and buried it in the dirt. And when his master came back, the one came and said, here, I've, I've got the 10 and I doubled it. Here's the five I got and I doubled it. And the one with the one dug it up, brought it to him and said, I know you are, are a, a stern man and, and all of these things and gave him back the one. And he said... You sinful servant, cast him out where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Miss Baha, it is not a choice. If you claim the gift of salvation, if you claim to be a Messiah, then at that moment, your training began for you to share the gospel with others in some way, shape, or form. You don't get to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. It's not an option. And there are so many lost out there. I, 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 it would be terrifying to stand before Yeshua and to be held accountable and him say, well, this guy right here, he would have actually made it to heaven if you hadn't ignored the one or multiple times that I brought him into your path so that you would share me with him so that he would be saved. And because you wouldn't do what I told you to do, he died in his sin. And now I have, I've, I have to cast him into the lake of fire. That's terrifying. I don't want to be held accountable for the lost soul of another because I refuse to not be a witness to the lost around me, to help them have the opportunity to be bold because I'm afraid somebody's going to 
yell at me or hate me or call me names or not like me or worried about what they think. The, the disciple Yeshua and the disciples were the prime example of how we are to be. They were beaten. They were uh, uh, cast into prisons and crucified and put to death to proclaim the name of Yeshua with no fear of death, with no fear of any of these things because they knew that their own salvation was a pure blessing and because Yeshua chose them himself just as he chose you. Turn with me also to John. We all know this one, most of us anyways. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In my own walk here in Italy, dealing with the saturation of the RCC, the Catholic Church, I had to make a choice to be very blunt and bold when it came to witnessing to these Catholics, especially the, the deep religious ones who are faithful to go to Mass every Sunday and everything, and, but I've had the opportunity to share, and, and they want to talk about praying to Mary and the saints and, and telling them flat out, giving them this verse and telling them that it is wrong and that it is a sin to pray to the Father by any other means than through the Son that right here says, no one comes to the Father except through me. And they don't like it. Or they're just like dumbfounded because they actually didn't know the Scripture says that because they're not taught to teach or to study the Scriptures. They're so saturated with the man, the teachings of man and, and, and the doctrines that are taught by these priests and everything to pray to Mary, to pray to the saints, to pray to angels, that the very verse that says no one goes to the Father except through the Son is completely left out. And let's see. And the last one here, John 6. John 6, 44 through 51 and verse 65. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So first of all, Mishpaha, none of us could have even come to know Yeshua if the Father had not drawn us to him first. And I will raise him up at the last day. So let me read that part again. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. That one may eat of it and not die. That one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread. I, excuse me. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. That is the Passover meal. 
that is the matzah, the unleavened bread. In verse 65, And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Mishpaha, it is so easy for us to forget this gift, this blessing. Blessing is not even a strong enough word for it. This, there is no word for it. We were given something that is eternal if we treat it with reverence, fear, and respect, and humility, and, tr and surrendering, and trembling at it, that first of all, we wouldn't even know of Messiah's existence if the Father had not led us to him. We, would, we wouldn't even know of the, of, of, of the Father if we had not learned that by the Son we can get to the Father and we would not even be able to declare that Yeshua is Adonai unless led by the Holy Spirit. We could not have any of this unless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was not combined and worked in each one of us to bring us to where we are right now. If you claim to be saved, to be a child of God, to be a part of Yisrael, to be the bride of Messiah, to be the bondservant of Yeshua, to be His, it is because that this process happened. The Father drew you to the Son. You received the Son, and the Son pointed you to the Father and His commandments, and, and you declared that Yeshua is Lord because the Holy Spirit revealed that truth to you. And why in the world would you not want to give that same gift that was given to you and share it with others so that they can have it. How do you know? Because I guarantee you it is true. The father is trying to show somebody else his son through you. Can you think about that for a second? For you to do this, it's not just... This isn't just a job. This isn't nothing. The Father in heaven wants to use you to tell somebody else of his son and use you to draw them to his son and to use you to help them come to receive his son so that his son can point them to him. And all be revealed through the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. What a privilege. This is a privilege of all privileges that Abba would even want to use us this way. And Yeshua says, if you confess me unto man, I will confess you unto my Father in heaven. So as you confess Messiah to others, Yeshua goes before the throne of the Father and says this one right here, bless him, bless her. They are out there telling everybody about me, Father. They're telling them. They're telling their neighbors. They have no fear. They're bold and courageous. They're not afraid of how anybody's going to react. They're willing and wantingly telling people about me, Abba. Bless them. Save them. 
I claim them, they're mine. And you think the father's not going to give him what he wants? Yeshua earned it. He deserved it. This is why Abba gave him all authority because he was willing to leave his throne to come in the flesh to suffer horrifically like no one could ever endure, to be beaten in a way that nobody could ever live through, to be crucified because of a love that we don't even comprehend. And if you confess him with that same passion in his heart, with that same determination that he had in the Garden of Eden when he said, no matter what, not my will, but your will be done. And he sweated drops of blood. With that same determination, he will go to the Father on your behalf and declare you his and confess you to him. And all he wants you to do is to proclaim him to others, to share with them this amazing gift of life and hope and eternal salvation, to share that with others so that they can repent of their sins, so that they can have freedom and be healed to be delivered from anger and sexual immorality, addictions and violence and all of these things that this world is running headlong into. The utter chaos and destruction that is soon to be poured out on this world and we have, don't even know yet how bad that's going to be. What we are witnessing now is but a taste. So Mishbaha, I beg you, please get your life right with Yah. Please separate yourself from the divisiveness of those who claim to be of the body Messiah and be faithful and tremble at his word and follow his scriptures from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, and leave it alone. And just do what it says and be glad that you even know what it says. Be glad that you even know about it. Be glad that you even know of the Father's existence and the Son's existence and the existence of the Holy Spirit and the existence of the Torah and the existence of eternal salvation and the existence of the new heaven and new earth and all that we have to hope in and awaiting for us. Be glad that you know this and quit being a fool and being punked by the devil and suckered into this garbage that he is suckering everybody into that is not rooted and that is not surrendered unto him, but merely puts on a facade. Don't be that. But be broken before him. Cry out to him. And watch him use you mightily. Watch him move mountains in your life in ways that you have yet to experience because you haven't surrendered to him yet. Let him lead you and walk in all of his ways. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Yavarechecha Adonai Vaishmarecha Yair Adonai Panavelecha Vachunecha Yesa Adonai Panavelecha Vayasim Lecha Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach Hasar Shalom. In the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen and amen. We love you all so much, Mishpacha. But Yah loves you so much more. Shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom.